Dear students, as we were discussing about the chapter Migration and its Types, the concepts must be very clear to you that what are the types of migration as we discussed the internal migration and international migration. Besides that, we had also discussed about the streams of migration which can also be named as the short distance migration or the long distance migration. And now, we will be taking up that what are the causes of migration. Now, there are various causes that people migrate from one place to another place. The causes can be number one, employment, number two, marriage, number three, education, and number four, if the people feel the lack of security at a certain place, they would like to migrate to a safer place. Now, these factors which are responsible for the migration, we just divide that into two parts. One is the pull factors and the second is the push factors. So, as the term only interprets the pull, pulling means the urban centers provide the vast scope for employment in industries, transportation, trade and other services. So, that means when the people they get the better opportunities of employment, so that is the pull factor. That means those areas they pull the people towards their site and the urban centers they offer the modern facilities of life this is also an attraction to the people so the people get attracted towards such areas urban centers act as magnets and attract the people from other areas so that means when the people get the better opportunities or the better facilities of life so all these factors they are termed as the pull factors now, we take up the push factors. Push means pushing the people aside from one area to another area. So, these are the factors which are generally the negative factors. For example, the unemployment, hunger and starvation. These are the basic two push factors that the people, they are forced to move from their place of residence to another place. When people do not find the means of livelihood, in the home villages, they are pushed out to nearby or distant towns. So, the push factors may help the people to migrate the short distances or the long distances. Now, the main reason for the male migration as we have already discussed is the employment and in case of females, main reason is the marriage. Now, look at the visual children on your screens. This visual is a pie diagram showing the reasons of the male migration by the last residence. Now, if you look at the diagram, you can see that around 38 percent of the migration of the males is only because of the employment. So, that means in search of a better quality of life, in search of a better employment opportunities, the males they migrate. And the second largest portion is some other factors, others may include maybe the education, maybe the better facilities of life. And if you look at the diagram, you can find that around 10 percent of the migration of the males is when they move after their birth. So, that means their movement after the birth that is the change of residence in that case. 25 percent is when they are moved with the households. So, households means the whole family shifts. It is not a single movement of the person or a male person, but the whole family movement that counts for 5 percent of the migration. And the least percentage of the migration under the males you will find children that is the marriage. And the marriage which is least under the male migration you will find in the another visual 
which is indicates the female migration. Here you can see more than 50 percent of the migration that is 65 percent of the migration of the females is only because of the marriage. So, you can well differentiate between the cause of the male migration and the female migration. And the second largest migration under the females as you can look in the visual that is when they are moved with the households that means the whole family shifts from the one place to another place. Then movement after the birth that is only 5 percent under the females. And surprisingly on this visual you cannot find the education as one cause of the movement of the female migration. Because in India the rural areas the people or the parents they do not prefer to send their girls, their daughters for the higher education. So, the migration under the females for the education purpose is totally zero. Now, the another part of the chapter we take up that is the consequences of the migration. Migration has both positive and negative consequences. The consequences can be economic, demographic, social, environmental or some other consequences also can be there because of the migration. So, we will be taking up all the consequences one by one. First, we take up the economic consequences. So, why do the people move? They move, they migrate for the economic gain and the economic benefit. So, that is the economic consequences. People migrating out send their remittance to their families at home and add to the economic prosperity. So, whatever they earn from the international migrants, the major source of the foreign exchange is that money which is sent by the people who go to the foreign land and settle over there. So, there is a data indicating that how much of the foreign exchange we earn out of this foreign migration. According to the World Bank's migration and the remittances fact book 2008, India is the top receiver of the foreign exchange. That is India received USD 27 billions in 2007. So, children you can imagine that how many people they have made the international migration. So, with the result India is getting the foreign exchange. So, this is a positive consequences of the migration. But when we talk about the internal migration which also results into the economic consequences, we say that the money which the people after making the interstate migration send back to their homes that money is spent by their family members on their food, repayment of the debts or the loans which they have taken for the treatment or for the medical purposes, for the marriages of their children, for the education of their children, agricultural inputs or under certain circumstances they build their houses also. So, the thousands of the poor villages of Bihar, Ampi, Urissa, UP and Andhra Pradesh for them this money is a life blood for their economy. But this unregulated migration to the metropolitan cities sometimes has caused the overcrowding and the growth of slums. Now, we talk about the demographic consequences. Migration leads to the unbalanced demographic distribution of population within the country because only the able young people migrate from villages to the cities in search of the jobs. Then what is the negative impact of their migration? You can find that the imbalance in the age and sex ratio in both the areas, the areas they migrate to and the areas 
they migrate from. Now, we take up the another consequence is that is a social. Migrants are very good agents of the social change as they bring the new ideas related to technologies, culture, food, dress, etc. Migration results in the intermixing of the diverse culture because the people from the different areas they come to certain station or the town. So, there is the intermingling of the cultures of such people. So, this intermingling also breaks the narrow considerations and it also widens the mental horizons of the people. Now, the environmental consequences, the large scale rural urban migration leads to the overcrowding in the cities and puts a tremendous pressure on the infrastructure. So, it results in the unplanned and haphazard growth of the cities where the slums and the shanty colonies, shanty I mean the unauthorized colonies which people establish because of the shortage of the place. Overcrowding is also related to the over exploitation of the natural resources. So, this over exploitation of the natural resources children is what? This is a negative impact of the migration in certain areas because we have to face the shortage of water, air and water pollution is also affected, problem of the sewage disposal also people have to face and of course, the management of the solid waste, this is also one of the exploitation of the natural resources. Now, when we take up the other consequences, the migration has a deep impact on the status of women. Why? Because when the people or the males, they migrate, leaving behind their wives. So, that means a tremendous pressure on the women is there. So, they have to face that pressure in the absence of their male family members. Migration enhances the remittance to the source region, but there is a heavy loss of the human resources. For example, children, when we say that our IT professionals, when the students they take the IT education and they move out to the foreign countries, then what happens? India is a loser of the skilled people, but at the same time India receives quite a heavy amount of the foreign currency also. So, children till now we have discussed about the chapter migration, their causes and consequences. Causes are very clear to you that why do the people migrate, maybe because of the personal reasons may be because of the employment or for other certain factors they migrate short distances as well as long distances. And when we discussed about the consequences of migration, the consequences can both be positive as well as negative. And under all the consequences we have discussed what can be the positive impacts and what can be the negative impact of those consequences of the migration. For example, the demographic consequences, the social con consequences or the consequences resulted to the environmental degradation or the exploitation of the resources. So, with this we end up with the chapter migration, causes, types and consequences. Thank you. Mm -hmm.